I would like to share with you today an experience I had about 10 years ago, give or take. I learned several years after this incident that what happened to me is what doctors call sleep paralysis. I say they're full of shit. It really happened. Now, I do not use drugs outside of caffeine and nicotine, and I also do not drink alcohol of any sort. So, this was not a hallucination caused by either of the two, nor do I have any mental issues that I know of. Let's make that perfectly clear. Going back about a year before this incident, at that time, I was really into ghost hunting shows. I watched and recorded any and every show that I could find that was about a team of ghost hunters investigating haunted places. Some were really good, and others just sucked. No disrespect. I remember watching an episode of... Wait a minute. In order to post on here, I can't use any real names, places, or addresses. So, okay, let's see if I can do this. I remember watching the show where the lead investigator guy is a muscle-bound jerk who don't like bullies, but in turn is one himself. He orders his crew around like he owns them, and they follow him blindly like sheep. I think you know the one I'm talking about. It's a good show. Well, at least it used to be. Anyway, they were investigating... Oh, shit. Here we go again. <clears throat> they were investigating a bar owned by an old country singer located in one of the southern states who wrote a semi-popular song about a girl. Everyone in the paranormal community says that this place is truly haunted. Okay, now that that's over with, back to the story. Anyway, they were down in the basement, I think. It's been a while since I've seen it. And to this day is the only episode of that show that I will never, ever watch again. They were talking to some guy about what goes on down there. When up in the left top corner of the screen, there appeared a black shadow figure wearing a cowboy hat standing in the doorway. At this time in the show, they stopped the film and pointed out that when they were actually down there, they did not see this figure and only discovered it when reviewing the footage. I was naive back then and didn't know much about the paranormal. I figured, it's a TV show, what harm could it do? Boy, <laughs> was I wrong. I know now that ghosts, entities, or whatever you want to call them, can follow you home from places and are made up of energy and can travel through any energy source that they want to. And one did. Now that I've given you the background to this story, let's proceed to the reason I'm actually telling you this. Many years before this incident, an old friend of mine back when I was 11 or 12, who I met through playing baseball, we were on the same team, but you don't really care about that. Anyway, he had recently bought a house and was looking for someone to give his old trailer slash mobile home to, which was where this incident took place. We had lost contact over the years, but unbeknown to me, he had kept in contact with my father. My father gave him my phone number. He called me up and made me an offer I couldn't refuse. A free trailer, just pay lot rent. Oh hell yeah, I'll take it. The trailer was old and needed work, but it was a good deal. I moved in, did some minor repairs, and a couple weeks after that, I invited my father and stepmother over for dinner. Now, my stepmother is what she calls an quote-unquote old soul. She can sense when things are quote-unquote not right with the universe. She took one look at this place and said, there's bad juju here, I don't like it. Every time she would come to visit, she was nervous. She wouldn't sit still, always looking down the hallway. She eventually stopped coming. She said it was too thick for her. Whatever that meant, I just thought she was nuts. I now know she's not. I lived there for many years and had some strange things happen. You know, like 
seeing apparitions out of the corner of my eye, hearing voices, feeling cold spots, etc. I just talked it up to bad lighting, outside noises, and insulation issues, some rational explanation, until that night. That night changed my whole belief system, forever. That night, I will never, ever, ever forget. I was lying in bed, asleep on my back, like I always do. When I woke up and noticed a black figure standing in the doorway of my bedroom, the hallway light was on. I always leave it on in case I need to make a bathroom run late at night. Anyway, the light from behind the figure showed it had a head, two arms, and two legs, but no eyes. It was just standing there. I blinked my eyes a couple times to make sure I was seeing what I was seeing, and sure enough, I was. Only this time, when I looked at it, it was wearing a cowboy hat, just like the figure in the show. The moment that I realized that, I physically saw it jump from the standing position in the doorway over top of the bed and land on top of me. My body then became stiff, unable to move. Out of my peripheral vision, I could see my wife lying next to me. I tried to scream, but nothing came out. I saw the figure sitting on top of me. It reached its hands down into my chest and started squeezing my lungs. I couldn't breathe. It was squeezing the life right out of me. There I was, gasping for air, paralyzed and unable to make a sound. Just when I thought I was about to die, a series of intensely bright white lights started flashing all around the room like a strobe light on steroids. I closed my eyes to shield them from the light. It was that bright. All of a sudden, my body jerked a couple times like a convulsion and then stopped. I opened my eyes and it was gone and I was able to breathe again. I laid there, heavy breathing for a good 20 minutes, too scared to even move. When I finally got the nerve to try, I slowly moved my right hand over to my nightstand. Still shaking from fear, I grabbed my phone to check the time like I always do when I wake up in the middle of the night. It was 3.48 a.m. That's right, the witching hour. Now, needless to say, I did not go back to sleep that night. I cautiously got out of bed so not to wake up my wife and turned on every single light in that house. Every single one of them, including the bedroom lights. How my wife stayed asleep, I don't know, but thankfully she did. I made a pot of coffee, grabbed my Bible, and sat at my dining room table, drinking coffee, Bible in hand, until the morning came. I must have smoked at least a pack and a half of cigarettes in that three-hour span of time, but I'm good with that. I'm still alive. I asked my wife if she had seen or heard anything strange the night before, and she said no. I just left it at that. I didn't tell her what happened, and still haven't. She probably wouldn't believe me anyway. My wife and I stayed in that trailer for about two months after that. We got the opportunity to rent an actual house and took it. We packed all our things and moved out. On the last day we were ever at that trailer, my wife had left the vacuum in the back bedroom where this experience happened. She asked if I would go get said vacuum and I agreed. Upon entering the room, a weird sense of dread fell over me and something inside of me told me I needed to get out of there and get out of there quick. I grabbed that vacuum, ran down the hallway, out the front door as fast as I could, slamming the door behind me. Then I turned around and yelled, You want this place? You can have it! I'm gone! My wife just looked at me like I completely lost my mind. My father and stepmother helped us move, along with some friends. 
My stepmother insisted that we drive all of the vehicles that contained our belongings over bodies of water to block any bad juju from coming with us to the new house. We did and have had no bad experiences in our new house. Well, aside from a few really bad dreams that I had the first couple nights we were there about the trailer, but that was it. Well, that's my story. I really don't care if you believe me or not. I know for a fact it really happened.